Sears TV. Good evening, everybody. How you doing? Welcome. This is Out of the Fog on Rogers TV. I'm your boy DC, and tonight we have an all-star lineup of incredible folks coming to the couch. First of all, from Choices for Youth, it is Jen and Matt, and they have an important project they want to talk about, as well as the incredible work that Choices for Youth does. And then we have Rachel White from CBDC coming through to talk about the newcomer loan program and the incredible impact it is having in the places where they operate across the province. And then finally, Lucy and Bradley, my old school homie has come back to the couch. She is a counselor who wants to talk about walk and talks, virtual services, and creating space so we can all get the help that we need. This is Out of the Fog. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back everybody. This is Out of the Fog and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Like I told you before the break, incredible guests on this evening doing huge work across the province and we want to tell you all about it starting with two of the dynamic team that power Choices for Youth, Jen and Matt. How are you guys doing tonight? Great. Thank doing you great. so much. Yes. Thanks mm -hmm. for having us. Oh my God, I'm glad you're here. I mean, I'll ask this like I never asked it before, but I wonder what you'll say. I want you to let the viewers at home know what you would say to describe choices for youth that operates here in our province and the work that you folks do. Yeah, absolutely. So Choices for Youth is a nonprofit organization focused on ending youth homelessness. Mm -hmm. And so we've been operating for almost 35 years. Wow. And the way that we go about our mission of ending youth homelessness is absolutely providing housing solutions, right? Everything from emergency housing to supportive and transitional housing, 80 plus options in the community. But we also do it by providing mental health supports, um, primary care, family and natural supports, basic needs, and also education and employment supports through four social enterprises. So the idea behind it and the philosophy behind it is that Young people are homeless because they don't have housing, of course, but they're also homeless because they've experienced a family breakdown. Uh, they, you know, the place where they're living with their family is unsafe. They have to leave. They may be experiencing mental health challenges. They may be navigating substance use. They may have complex, uh, you know physical health care needs. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of reasons why this may happen. They may not have an income, right? So what we aim to do as an organization is we aim to provide all the conditions for stability. You know, if I lost my job tomorrow, for example, the only thing that separates me from a vulnerable young person is I have people in my life mm -hmm. who can pick me up when I'm down and make sure I have a safe place to live and that I'm okay, mm -hmm. right? The youth who we work with at Choices for Youth, many of them, they just don't have those people in their lives. So in many cases, we sweep in, we say, let's provide you with what you need during this hard time and our goal is as quickly as possible to get you back on your feet and back towards pursuing and achieving your goals. Mm -hmm. So we've uh, you know we've been around for a long time and uh, the work that we do is really special and the work that we do and what we're talking about today is we really do it in an integrated way. Mm -hmm. So a young person who comes through their doors, yes, they can access a hot meal, but they can also access housing and they can also access mental health care and primary care all under one roof and that's a really really special and impactful model that's so incredible and so well said thank you so much and i gotta say you know a guy smiley sitting here next to the cat, like, <laughs> he's loving every second of it as well and i know you share a similar passion so i would like to ask you when it comes to the work and the projects that choices for youth engage in there are some very big conversations happening in the local market and i would like to get your take on what you would like to say about IYS, or as you will describe it, I'll leave it over to you. Yeah, so first of all, Jen, that was incredible. And that's really what we're trying to do mm -hmm. is look at that integrated youth services work that's happening at Choices for Youth and how can we reach people that are in rural Newfoundland and Labrador. Mm -hmm. We had an opportunity to go around and talk to people throughout our provinces, talk about, uh, talk to uh, agencies, community groups, and we heard loud and clear that people in rural Newfoundland and Labrador, for the most part, want to stay close to what they call
call home. Mm -hmm. That might not be a physical structure, but where they call family and home mm -hmm. to get that support. Right now, they're having to, in a lot of cases, get on a bus traveling to St. John's to get those supports, and they end up in places like Choices for mm -hmm. Youth. We're looking at it right now, like quarter of the people that we see are not from metro area, more than quarter. Wow. So they're coming in. So what we're looking at doing is providing that model of support, that wraparound piece of work, mm -hmm. so everybody works together to help support that individual as they go through any of those uh, issues that Jen had just spoken about. So. Right. It's all about working together, cutting down these barriers. If a youth comes in, for example, and they're getting a meal, but then they need to see a doctor, if we have to send them to another location, the chances of them actually going are, are really low mm -hmm. at that point. If all we have to do is walk across a hallway with them and support them to see somebody, then that's gonna happen more likely. So wow. that's what we're about. Let's break down barriers, provide supports that are close to home, mm -hmm. and working as a group. The other thing I say is it was perfect timing because with our health authority going through the restructuring and doing this team approach, we fit so nicely into that. So working very closely with Newfoundland and Labrador Health Services, uh, we're able to do that and now we just uh, released a request for proposals to uh, open two new sites in rural Newfoundland and Labrador. Well, let's so we're, talk about we're it. We're very proud of that. And you should be very proud of that. And it's interesting, you know, Choices for Youth doing such incredible work at its locations in St. John's and now coming together with various entities to create two places outside the city is so amazing and so many organizations are contributing to this project um, I wonder if there are you know any that come to mind that you feel like you are both working so seriously with or is it such a huge group of stakeholders who all want the same thing for the success of the province that it's hard to pick what do you think about that well right now we have over 65 different community agencies that are working as wow. part of eight different steering committees throughout the province wow. so these eight steering committees have been working together for five plus years mm -hmm. at this point in time to get to this point so all these people come together we all did logic models for them so that they could identify what the needs are in their area right so it's not just the community they're in but the hub of that area right. what are the needs and how can we address those needs so we'll be looking very closely to that when we do our uh, review our request for proposals and then move that forward so so many organizations from government health community uh, lived experience all of those are a part of what we're doing and we also I will say too and then I'll pass over to Jen that we have a very strong youth advisory council mm -hmm. so we have youth from across the province that meet on a regular basis and the big part about integrated youth services it's for youth and it's by youth so they have a strong voice in everything we do mm -hmm. to help make that barrier free and a place where they can feel welcomed and feel like they can get that support so we have so much support throughout the province uh, it's just unbelievable at this point I think it's really exciting and may I say you know what's really resonating is the thought about these two additional outside of you know st. John's Metro opportunities exciting and so needed based on the stat of how many um, youth end up coming into the city for all the reasons you mentioned at the top Wow mm -hmm. And further, that this is a project that has been in the works for five years. I would even say more than that. I'd say it's closer yeah. to seven years, well, probably. We, well, like yeah, when it's it been a long journey. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's really interesting. So the integrated youth services model and the way that it's evolved, mm -hmm. it's so rooted in community. So we have eight steering committees, 65 plus community partners, as Matt mentioned. Mm -hmm. And each of them have identified for eight different parts of the province what would integrated youth services look like in their area. Right. So while there needs to be shared fidelity to a model around around primary care, mental health, housing, yeah. education, employment, harm reduction, there's so much flexibility within that model to say, listen, in our community, what we don't have is a supportive or transitional housing. That's mm -hmm. where we need to focus. In our community, what we don't have is peer-to-peer -peer support for young moms and their kids. That's mm -hmm. where we need to focus. Mm -hmm. So it's really a customizable model, shared fidelity to a model that we know works. You know, we have 100 sites across this country, integrated youth services sites, and there's 50 more in development. And of course, we are proud to have two of those that are in development right now. Uh, but ultimately, this is a model that needs to work for communities. And when we think about the role that Choices for Youth plays, 
we call ourselves a backbone, a backbone role. Mm. So we are happy to provide finance support. We're happy to provide human resources support, impact measurement. We're happy to provide fund development communication support, administrative support. What we're not wanting to provide is the, we don't want to be the operational leads on this. Like we want to turn this over to communities and say, you know your community best, you know your region best, you know how to serve the young people in your communities best, over to you. You lead this, we'll invest in you alongside the provincial government and Newfoundland and Labrador Health Services. We'll make sure you have everything you need to succeed seed, but the money should go there and we're just here to support. And so listen, in our final moments here, how can folks who are maybe related to or in the orbit of community groups and organizations who could find themselves as the place where these exciting two sites unfold, what directions can you give them? The best thing to do is go on to our new website that we have, it's nliys.ca. All the information is there. We'll have videos uh, answering questions and uh, webinars that we did last week. Awesome. That'll be on there, so all the information is there. Also go to choicesforyouth.ca as well. Guys, Choices for Youth, please Google them, check them out, such incredible projects and works underway for the betterment of our province across the board. You want to get on board and figure out how you can support this organization in any of the incredible work they do for the youth and for tomorrow in our province. This is Out of the Fog, and we'll be right back after this break. Your opinion matters, and we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us using our viewer feedback line, your direct connection to shaping the shows you love. It's easy, just grab your phone, scan the QR code on your screen and take our quick survey. Share your thoughts and let's make your viewing experience even better. Welcome back everybody, this is Out of the Fog and I'm so excited, first time on the couch. Rachel, how are you doing? I am doing fantastic, Donnie, how are you? Oh my God, it's so great, we're hanging out, what more do I want, you know? Exactly. So listen, while I got you on the couch, I wanna ask you about an organization that we both love, does incredible work, CBDCs, and I wanna ask you to tell the viewers at home before we go any further all about CBDCs and the good work that you do. So I work for the Community Business Development Corporation and we provide financing to small businesses and entrepreneurs across Newfoundland and Labrador. We're specifically rural focused and there are 15 CBDCs and I need to plug that we do have a partner association within the St. John's Mount Pearl area, Metro Business Opportunities. So many organizations, um, really from businesses and beyond come to bloom through the assistance and help from everything that the CBDCs do. And as you mentioned, it's rurally focused and across Atlantic Canada specifically in terms of what CBDCs do. So when you think about all the programs and things that are happening under the umbrella of the CBDC, what is the most exciting thing that you want to be talking about here today? And I think I already know the answer. So I want to talk about our newcomer loan program. So this is a program that launched in 2023 okay. and it's specifically focused on not permanent residents. So okay. prior to 2023, for all of our business loan programs, we could only lend um, to permanent residents within Canada. Thankfully, um, through the assistance with the provincial government, they have provided us with a pot of funds from the Department of Industry, Energy, and Technology Amazing. in order to be in order to offer loans to non-permanent residents. Okay. As of right now, we are the only financial institution that are offering this kind of loan program within Newfoundland and Labrador, to my knowledge. So we are filling that gap um, for non-permanent residents. And the lovely thing about this loan program is you just need to be 19 years or older oh. and not be a permanent resident at the moment. Um, that's an incredible opportunity. And I have a lot of folks in my orbit who are not born and raised here. And this sounds like an incredible opportunity that they would like to hear about because, you know, we're all ambitious and aspiring and entrepreneurial in our ways. And yet there are sometimes roadblocks, depending on a bunch of factors outside of our control, that uh, get in our way of really making our dreams come true. But you know all about that. And I'm sure you've heard stories and have been a part of stories relative to this. Yeah, well, this is where this really came from because we were hearing from potential clients that they wanted to start businesses, they wanted to acquire businesses in rural communities, mm. but they just couldn't get the financing in order to do that. So through this program last year, we actually had an entrepreneur who acquired a business along the Southern Shore, a convenience store. The store was up for sale. The owner was retiring. They wanted to step back from the business. And through that succession, the owner actually has become a mentor to this entrepreneur. They've taken over the business through the newcomer loan program. They wouldn't have been able to finance it without this program. Whoa. And so now there's this partnership between the previous owner and the new owner and this new owner has now set down roots 
in a community and kept a business thriving that the community really needed. And last time I was visiting this entrepreneur, they were telling me a story of how one of their customers had actually taken them out fishing <laughs> in their boat, their whole family. So him, his wife, his small children, uh, they went out fishing. There's so many stories here. You know, the first story that pulls at me is um, the mentorship conversation. Yeah. Which relative of not only the Avalon East, but of course rural components of the province also, sustainability is such a conversation. And if you live in these amazing, beautiful harbors and communities and bays around, you know the story. How do we keep the services running? How do we keep the community pulse pulsing? And how do we invite new people in to make the tapestry of our small towns and bays more interesting and more culturally rich and this sounds like an amazing way to make that happen. Yeah and that's what we want is we want people to come in and establish roots in these businesses mm. with these businesses and ideally a non-permanent resident that's coming into the communities they're eventually going to become a permanent resident they're going to set roots they're going to if they have a business they're going to set down roots within those communities and they're going to help the community thrive and they're going to grow their family so that is what we really want to see from this program and the flip side of that is you have that succession piece where you have someone exactly. who is retiring and they're looking for someone to buy the business a perfect opportunity is a newcomer to Canada who is looking to acquire a business in order to set down roots within a community. So listen, we're in our final minute here. How can folks who are watching us hang out here get in touch and learn more about this program? So the best way to learn about this program is to contact your local CBDC or Metro Business Opportunities in the St. John's Mount Pearl area, set up an appointment with your business development officer and have a chat with them. They'll be able to walk you through the process and determine what the best fit is for you. Okay guys, thank you so much. See you next time and this is Out of the Fog. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back, everybody. This is Out of the Fog. And do I ever love when life works the magic and someone who you hung out with and had the best times with and then time just does what it does, but then you come back together and it's like nothing has passed. And to find out they're doing such incredible, important work, well, that's a cherry on the cake. So I said, like, come on the show, we're gonna hang out. Lucy, what is up? Hi, Donnie. How are you? So good to see you. You too. Yeah, it was uh, great to reconnect. I have been a while. <laughs> yeah. It was great. And now here we are, and I was so inspired by the conversation that we had. Um, Me because, too. you know, we're all in the business of helping people and serving others and doing all the things that we want to do. But to find out that your educational path and your passion has taken you to such an important place, it was just inspiring for me. And I think there's a lot of people out there um, in the teenage orbit and beyond who just have a lot going on and they wish that they could find someone to help them through that. And I remember the microcosm of uh, my teenage years. Uh, that was yesterday, but we won't talk about that. Um, I want to hear about your story and what led you into the work that you do. So I'm a counselor. Mm -hmm. I do online and walk and talk counseling mm -hmm. with youth and adults, age 14 plus. And uh, it really stemmed from my work in education. I was a teacher for many years and I now work as a guidance counselor in high schools around the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently substituting because I'm diving back into some full-time work as a counselor. And a lot of my clients are young people and, uh, and adults as well. And, and Funny enough, we have the similar issues happening. Hmm. There's a lot to deal with right now. Mm. Um, social media is amazing, but it creates that comparison mm. dialogue going on in our heads all the time. And it can be a real struggle for people to get through their daily lives without comparing themselves to everybody else. Wow. And uh, as a counselor, I think it's really important to have a place where you can vent you know, release some of those stresses, have an unbiased, unjudgmental person to talk to who also has the professional background mm -hmm. um, and the education in psychology to sort of really tease out what's happening. Um, so I kind of like to say that I'm, you know, my clients know what they need. They know what they want, but I like to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. So they know what the big picture is, but they can't quite see it. So if I can just connect the dots for them, they can see the big picture and kind of move through their, through their day a little bit easier. Because mm -hmm. it's really about like having fun with life, squeezing out the joy, having a good day. 
Um, it's pretty simple, but it's also um, very challenging right now for, for young people to, to get that joy through their day. Yeah. It was so well <laughs> said. And when I think back, uh, and I'm just kidding earlier, it was not yesterday, a long, very long time ago. Uh, teenage long. years. You know, you're so right. And I think back then, the culture of creating space and empathy and being very much forefront with the need for us to have those opportunities to talk about our lives and to vent or to confide or to speak things that shame or other things keep you from doing, that narrative was not around. And now I feel like it is more than ever, but yet I wonder if it's permeating out because of the issues that you see are greater than ever. Yeah, and there's a real, um isolation and loneliness that comes with mm. this boom in technology mm. you know connection community is getting lost because we're face and eyes into our screens all day long and we feel like we are connecting but it's not real human connection so I feel like a lot of times when I'm doing the one-on-one -on -one with my sessions mm -hmm. it's uh, it's really just providing that human connection mm -hmm. sometimes it's validation sometimes it's just empathy sometimes it's just listening um, and other times it's, it's strategizing and finding tools and saying, okay, well, what's the issue here? And is there a better way of doing this? Mm. So it's perspective changing and how can we look at this a different way? Yeah. And friends are awesome. Great. Friends are great. Let's talk to our friends. Let's vent with our friends. But they're not going to give you that really professional, unbiased opinion. And they can't really tease out like what's really going on mm. in there, you know? So. Um, I think it's really important to have a counselor to talk to regularly. Um, and it doesn't have to be a crisis moment. Like, it can be, I have a decision to make. I don't know what to do. Um, maybe one hour with a counselor is all you need. Maybe you need to do six sessions in a row. But it's going to look different for everybody. That's so, so true. Uh, I think, you know, there's a real sort of apprehension about reaching out because it has to be all or nothing. It really doesn't. Um, hmm. And most counselors will offer a 15-minute free consult because I just, it's so important to me that my clients find the right person mm -hmm. and it might not be me. Hmm. So if it's not me, I'll let them know, I'm sorry, I, I, I feel like I'm not the best person to work with you. Right. Let's find someone else because I do have a lot of connections, I know a lot of great counselors out there and uh, let, let's make some connections, let's navigate that little piece, right? I'm, I'm here for the client, not for the business, right? Um, yeah. You know what I love is what, and maybe you can tell me, I hope I'm right. Have we become more willing to ask for that cup of sugar? Have we become more mm. uh, able to reach out to get the help we need? What are you seeing? It's definitely getting better. Okay. Uh, I do see, especially to like parents reaching out for their children mm. um, to say, my child is struggling. Uh, I think they need to talk to somebody. So I, it's definitely getting more um, acceptable. There's mm. less stigma around it, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I know there's a, a long list of counselors in the city, um, so it's, it's a growing practice, which yeah, is okay. amazing That's because great. we need it. Um, so yeah, I think it's getting better. Good. I think there might be still more stigma around adults reaching out for themselves. Sure because we are that generation that are. didn't really reach out. Mm -hmm. So, um, Well, I'm glad I started reaching out. It's helped me in my own personal life to have someone create space so I can talk about my life in a way that no one else around me is um, equipped, got the time or the interest really to engage in. And so it's been so helpful to me in so many little and huge ways. But I want to touch on something important in our last minute or so of Hank, yep. is that you offer your service in quite what I would consider to be an innovative way. And it's the walk and talk. Describe right. that for people viewing this. Okay, so I do offer online counseling, also walk and talk. So we can pick a trail in the city, it can be Bowering Park, which is great because in the winter it's clear that you can walk in the winter yeah um, so we walk and we talk it's a regular counseling session but we are parallel we're moving our bodies we're getting that. out in nature we're getting some fresh air you know it's releasing those endorphins yes. and clearing the head clearing the thoughts and you're really able to get so much more clarity I'm able to work better hmm. I have a clearer head when I'm outside walking in nature and fresh air and the other option too is 
you could go for a walk, my client, and you could listen to me in your ear. So if you have a headpiece, and you can hear me, of course, mm -hmm. and we can talk back and forth while you're walking outside. So That's awesome. The idea is counseling is not restricted to two chairs facing each other. Yes. There's a little bit of tension and anxiety there when you're facing, like, like I'm having now. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, there's a little tension there when you're face to face, mm -hmm. and uh, that's not what we want. So online is great because you can sit at home on your bed and talk to me on your phone. Right. Um, but the walk and talk is really something I'm <sighs> passionate about: getting outdoors and and walking side by side. And there's things we do, like there's the confidentiality agreement has a few tweaks to it. Sure. If we run into someone you know. Mm -hmm say you run into a friend and you're walking with your counselor, um, we'll talk about that beforehand sure. and come up with some kind of scenario like, oh, this is my friend that I'm just out for a walk with. Like, there's ways we can... This is my friend. Yeah. Ducey. Right. <laughs> Ducey Gradley. Right. Yes. Perfect. But we'll talk We're about ready. that beforehand and have it so that you're completely comfortable. I love and, it. And you pick the location. It's not exercise. It's a stroll. It's it's really controlled by the client so I'm already at peace thinking about walking and talking and I have to be honest with you as I mentioned uh, before I that's what I do yeah. with someone special in my life and it's just so amazing in all the ways we're in our final yes. seconds here Lucy I want you to let everybody know how they can get a hold of you and to sure. reach out to learn more about what you can do to help them out so you can email me at rambler counseling nl at gmail.com you can check out my website at ramblercounselingnl.ca. Nice. It's a rambler because I like to ramble in the woods. Um, <laughs> and we ramble on when we talk too. I love so, it. yeah, Rambler Counseling NL. Thank you so check much. It out. Listen, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thanks uh, for having me. Oh my God, you'll come yeah. back? I, yeah. I hope so. We'll be co hosting yeah. next. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's walk and talk first. Yeah, walk and talk. That's, I feel better when I'm outside yeah. and I'm moving. Can you tell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you did great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Love you. Okay. Guys, we all need to create space. We all need to talk to someone who cares. We might need to make a new friend as well. Lucy can tick all the boxes. Check her out. This is Out of the Fog. We'll be right back after this break. Your opinion matters, and we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us using our viewer feedback line, your direct connection to shaping the shows you love. It's easy. Just grab your phone, scan the QR code on your screen, and take our quick survey. Share your thoughts, and let's make your viewing experience even better. Thank you, everybody. Once again, such a pleasure to have you join us while we hang out with some passionate, active folks on the couch here at Rogers out of the Fog Studios to really let you know what's going on in the streets, what the opportunities are, and how we're all coming together to make that happen. So thank you so much to Jen and Matt for Choices for Youth. Thank you, Rachel from CBDC. And thank you, Lucy Ann from Ramble. I'll tell you what, guys, we're all in this thing together called life, so let's make it count. This is Out of the Fog, and we'll see you next time. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. We want to hear from you. Provide feedback on this show or find out how you can get involved. Call, email us, or scan the QR code to take our quick survey. They've reached the summit. To Stanley Cup victories. Greatness. And a new legacy begins. Absolutely amazing. It has happened in Vegas. It's not a destination. And lightning has struck twice. It is a continuous journey we did it! We did it! that never ends. These are the moments you dream of. Stanley Cup champions. Here are three reasons why your social strategies should include Rogers TV. Reason number one is we have hyper-local audiences. The community TV channel gives you a chance to engage with people where you live. So you really get to know your neighbors and they get to know you. Reason number two is we can help diversify your distribution. With social media, it's really important to be able to have a wider audience. And Rogers TV can actually help complement your online presence by delivering to a different audience. And it's actually really easy to repurpose 
your existing content or to just create new material specifically tailored for community TV. And finally, reason number three is we can help enhance your credibility and your trust. And by aligning your brand with Rogers TV, you can tap into that trust that viewers have. This can boost your reputation, especially among viewers who favor local businesses and value community involvement. One, two, three. It's that easy to build your local audience with Rogers TV. This fall on Rogers TV, we'll be airing your RNC, Compassion.